Blessed is he whose help whose help is the God who helped Jacob. The one that helped Jacob and nothing could stop him. Ah, this morning I came to the greeting of Pentecost to announce to you that God is ready and God is waiting. God is ready and God is waiting. God is ready and God is waiting. We have six days of intercourse with the word of God. We have six days of communion and fellowship with the word of God. And just as in these words that I speak to you, this words are spirits. And this words lie. This words that I speak to you, this words are spirits. And this words lie. So everything being equal would just just stay in the presence and just worship and just bless God. But you know, many of us were not there, but it's okay. It doesn't matter. We are already here today. So God just said, I should come and announce to you that when you are ready, He is ready. It's an announcement. You can't be ready and God is not ready. God is ever ready waiting. So the day you are ready for God, God is ready for you. Now this issue of delay is not because of God's insufficiency and lack of preparation or unpreparedness issue of delay in any area of life at any time in any season in any circumstance issue of delay speaks directly to the lack of preparedness the insufficiency that of the unwillingness of the one who needs god's help as for god he says i will help you when you are ready, God is ready. That is what I'm sharing with you. And very briefly, I just wish we we'll have some more time in His presence. I trust God in the next service. I just want to stay and just worship the presence. And I, this house has received another level of help. After these six days, I feel and I sense in my spirit the delivery of new supplies in help. So I just want you in whatever category you find yourself to be aware that this house is helped. And when this house is helped, it means the, the household is helped. It means those in the household have help. The main ministry of Jesus, let me, let me attempt a very brief teaching service. The main ministry of Jesus was to get a people ready for God. Jesus did not come to dwell here physically. That's why he did not marry. He didn't have to marry. He didn't have any property. That was not the issue. He didn't have anything. He didn't, he didn't have, have to worry about, about anything. He didn't, he didn't even have, have a house. No, no family. In those three years, he ceased almost completely to be a member of his, the family of his upbringing, where he was brought up, where he was born into at a human level. At some moments, the mother and his own family members, his brothers and sisters, will go hunting, looking for him, just hoping he was not mad. He had a brief time, and the only thing that mattered was to prepare people. He came to raise a people who will do the work. He was, and he is the eternal one that didn't have to be in temporality. He didn't have to be in time. 
So, so his mission on time, or his mission in time, was just he wore the flesh, grew in human kind, he grew as man, just so that he will find men and women, hand over the help of the Spirit to them, show them the way, return them to the plan of God, and then that is why those three years of ministry, more than 2,000 years later, is beginning and re-beginning and re-beginning. In every time, in every season, there's a fresh beginning. Just when you think the church is down and out, a fresh outbreak of fire somewhere, a fresh expression of anointing somewhere, a fresh madness of power somewhere, at any time, anybody, a family, an individual, a ministry, a business, anyone in any area who has God as Father, at any time you are ready, God is ready. So He came to make people ready, and God had been ready. God had been ready. God said in Joel chapter 2 verse 28, I will pour out my spirit afterwards. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He said this a long time before Jesus came. Afterward, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And it shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions upon and also on my main servants and on my and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will pour out my spirit in those days. He was ready. Before time began, he was ready. So, whatever area you are waiting or say, I'm waiting for God, no. You are not waiting for God. God is waiting for you. The day you are ready, you will meet God. Ready. He's been ready. Jesus, after those three years of intense teaching to get them ready, after his resurrection, he still wouldn't just depart. He still had to move around, hover around, brood upon these men just to get them ready. Acts of Apostles chapter 1, verse 2 to 3. After resurrection, he wouldn't resume in heaven and just be seated at the right hand of the Father and oversee what's happening on the earth. He said, no, let me just tarry up a few things here and there until the day in which he was taken up after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen to whom he also presented himself alive after a suffering by many infallible proofs being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom getting them ready for the kingdom, making them available, bringing their mind to the logic of the kingdom, bringing their spirits in alignment with the kingdom, bringing their vision in alignment, in synchrony with the kingdom. He, just, he held his ground, delayed his ascension for 40 days in order to tidy up here and there on kingdom matters, all of this to get the people ready. Sometimes you hear me, I come and teach. And all I've been teaching is to teach the same thing. It's because somebody's not ready. Sometimes you don't even know that the pastor is an administrator in God's administration. So if you are a pastor, a minister called by God and his spirit guides you, no matter how hopeless you are, as long as you remain in that call and his spirit is helping you. You may not be intelligent. You may not be eloquent. But when you show up, the plan is that God wants to use you to get people ready. 
get people ready for marriage, get people ready to be parents, get people ready to be kingdom wealth carriers, to be carriers of his wealth on earth. Not everybody is qualified to carry his wealth. People can flip overnight and carry wealth from Satan. Join one satanic group and you are started off with money and you keep killing and sacrificing and you keep increasing and prospering. It doesn't cost much. much. It just costs what is natural to the carnal man, wickedness. A, a, a natural man doesn't learn wickedness. So prospering from Satan is by default very easy. Because nobody learns to lie. Nobody learns to be wicked. Nobody learns to be destructive and disruptive negatively. But for you to be ready that God will entrust the wealth of his kingdom in your hands and appoint you as the steward of the resources that bear the imprint of his kingdom for the sake of his glory. His government revealed on earth. He has to get you ready. He has to get you ready. You may be David and your assignment on earth is to be the king of Israel. Uniting Judah with the north and conquering Jerusalem. He is ready for you. But you, you have to be ready. You have to be ready. You may have to spend some time in the desert to get ready. How will somebody be anointed king and not be inaugurated? Get ready. He just spoke to me this morning. He said, go and tell them when they are ready, I am ready. So for that matter, that thing that you've been bothering God about and all of this, just ask God. I think at this point, as we, as we enjoy the, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost today, say, Lord, show me where I am right now. In the progression of your plan, in the, in the path of your plan, in the trajectory of fulfilling your will, where am I? Am I in kilometer zero? Kilometer one? Am I three quarter away? Am I yet to even begin? Because it may just be the best, the greatest prayer is the prayer. Lord, show me the way. Get me ready. Get me ready. I think that may just be the prayer minister. That's the prayer I need to pray. That's the prayer I've been praying. Lord, get me ready. Every day I wake up, I just say, oh, I'm not ready. Lord, get me, get me ready. Every, uh, uh, the dreams I see, the, the visions are mighty. But when I look at me, not ready. So, Lord, get me ready. Because when you are ready, it's ready. The whole issue of the pastoral, of coming day in and day out and expecting you to come out when I call you, is to get you ready. It's not to come and comfort me because I'm comfortless and hopeless and depressed. It's to get you ready. And can I tell you something? If you are not ready for God, the day you have the reach where you are supposed to reach, then it's not God that has taken you there. That means that place is the burial ground of destiny. Is dead telling them things of the kingdom. Somebody will expect me today, let's just come and do fire, 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 fire. People have done it. It doesn't take people far. The word gets you ready. The anointing this season is to bring the word that will stir readiness in somebody's life. Being 30 years old, 40 years old is number. Being ready is quality, not quantity. Instructed them to wait as a protocol of readiness. There is a waiting. May know that teaching came up either last week or one of these days. Acts chapter 1, verse 4 to 5. Acts chapter 1, verse 4 to 5. Say, Father, get me ready. Rise to your feet, raise your right hand. Say, Lord, please get me ready. 
Now, at this point, I'm not sure we are together. I was expecting you to respond. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, help me with your grace. By your spirit, get me ready for yourself. Get me ready for your glory. Get me ready for your might. Get me ready for your wealth. Spark, shout it out. Get me ready for your wealth. And too many poor people are just poor. Wretched around. And they say, God is not yet ready for me. God is ready. You are not yet ready. So many helpless, empty people around. Troubling people. Pestering people's life. And they think life is not yet ready. It's not yet my time. Shut up. It is your time. You are not ready. Why am I saying it's your time? God has been waiting for you. If you turn this moment and get ready, God will show up because he's ready. Raise your two hands. Shout it like you are the one I'm talking about. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, today do something in my life that will get me ready. Put pressure in my spirit and get me ready. Lord, speak to me directly. I don't want to wait again. Ready, be seated. Let me ready for the next move. We are here for you. Come and walk. We are here for you. Come and what you do. We set our hearts on you. Come and do what you do. We need a move. So we need a move in this hour. We need a move. I'm just, I'll keep, I'll keep doing what everything I need to do. Trusting God at every time like this, in every season like this, God gets somebody ready. Next month, we're going to have spiritual warfare too. We are going to wage war against the devourer. The Holy Spirit said, so me, I start preparing. Waging war against the devourer. From the Thursday after the first Sunday, the first Sunday is second. That Thursday, we resume spiritual warfare. What is it that is devouring? Devouring strength. And that season is to get somebody ready. Just to let you know whether it makes any sense to you or not. I'm just going to be here for as long as God keeps me for somebody to be ready. If it is one person after several seasons, several years, even if it's one person, just guys came. He got 12 ready. And guess what? Thousands of years, hundreds of years, the impacts has met me. I'm standing here. Hundred years, as long as he dies, there will be a remnant. Speaking to that three years ministry of getting 12 men ready. Told them, wait. Acts 1, 4 to 5. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them. It was a command. Don't depart from Jerusalem. The temptation for you to jump in and ride and, and just, I said, hopla, hooray. Hey, we can do it. He says, stay in Jerusalem. Wait. Wait. You are not yet ready. Wait. When the promise of the Father comes upon you, you will be ready. But you are not even ready for the promise to come, so wait. If they were ready for the, for the promise to come, it should have been as they was ascending to heaven, as they went into upper room, then the Holy Ghost would, brrr, would come. They were not. Forty days he stayed, he stayed with them. He taught them in the, while he was in the flesh. And now, glorified, still teaching. And after that, once you, no wonder, they ask him, at, the, at this point, can we expect that the kingdom will be now be handed over to us? And he said, are you ready? That's not the problem. He said, wait for the promise of the Father, for which I already told you. That John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. Wait. Wait. And see what they did. For the first time it became clear to them 
that all this while it was about Jesus. It was about Jesus teaching them. It was about Jesus healing. It was about Jesus correcting them. It was about Jesus scolding them. They had not taken responsibility. They were not in it. It was all about Jesus. They wanted to enjoy. For them it was just, let's enjoy the presence of Jesus. The work of Jesus, the company of Jesus, the ministry of Jesus, the seminary of Jesus. But when Jesus departed and told them, wait, it something just clicked. So why don't we start doing something? Something happened while they waited. Now this is what I want you to pay attention to. Something happened. Acts chapter 1 from verse 12 to 14. Something happened. As they obeyed, because it was a command. They don't leave Jerusalem. Don't go anywhere. You are not ready to go to anywhere. Later on, he told them, you will, you will be my witnesses. Not only in, in Jerusalem. Not only in Judea. Also in Samaria. And to the ends of the earth. But meanwhile, before, before that time, just wait. Because there are still stuffs to be fixed. There are still these and that to be set straight. Alignments to be made. Acts chapter 1 verse 12 to 14. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the zealot, and Judas, the son of James. These all, for the first time, these all of them, no more arguments about who is greater than who. At this point, we needed help. So we are no longer arguing. These all, this one may not like this one, this voice, this other person's opinion hurts the other one. But these all, with their differences, buried. These all continued. That means they menored, like just say, say, stay, abide. They abode, abode or abided with a, one accord in prayer and supplication, one accord, agreement, agreements agreement of purpose and until now they were not ready in agreement it was who will sit at the right and who will sit at the left no agreement it was who will be greater agreement no agreement but at this time something clicked but i don't have reason to hate you and you don't have reason to fight with me the other time we fought it was not as if there was anything significant so let's just trash all this nonsense maybe we are the, our problems that's it. Families that husbands and wives don't even pray together. They say, God, take us to another level. Take us to another level and you will die because you don't even know where God, you don't even know how to stay together. How will you gather it together? How will you handle it together? How many of you are coupled? How many of your husband and wife? When last did you even spend one minute to pray together? When last did you sit down as couple to even talk about the plan of God for you or the plan of God for your children? The only thing is that they that they always say you you told me the other time you needed 100,000 naira just to let you know I have only 20,000 naira do whatever you want to do with it no talking no conversation no no vision and you are saying Lord and you come to church and open your mouth Lord you are my helper he's not you are not ready so I should tell you shut up go back home bury your differences and start from even being together in ministry as few as singers are somebody's face does not like another person's face as few as you are no agreement as few as we are these things let's let's take it home let's take it home let's take it home they click just click. Just click. I'm sure you know that this family is family. I can't preach without make, make, making reference to family. Because when we come, sometimes you see couple who, who they just dress in uniform. They just, uh, just wear the same ankara. Same ankara. But they started talking when they were on the way. And it was argument. 
Every time they talk, is quarrel, misunderstanding, no connection, no vision. Can two go together huh? except they are great? How will you get into God's plan without a devil? Do you agree with the word of God as an individual? The young girl as the young woman? Do you agree with his word? Do you agree with his plan for you? How will God even take you to a plan you are not part of? These men were not part of the plan. They were observers of the plan. They wanted to be beneficiaries of the plan. That's why if you, if you look at it, maybe from verse 6, they told Jesus, uh, uh, at this point, uh, uh, um, uh, um, we just wanted to ask you, at this point, is, is the kingdom going to be um, restored to, uh, to Israel so that we can take charge? Just because they shut up your mouth. It's, that's not the business. That's not the issue right now. You are not ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. But this time around for the first time, they came and they were in prayer, in one accord. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women. Now this time around, no division, no discrimination. These were Jews. Jews, everything being equal, women should not be part of just stay in the same place with men. No, how are you doing? The temple in Jerusalem did not accommodate that. The women who had to be differently positioned hidden somewhere, men somewhere. But now there is no Jesus in their midst. And just seem to point them to the fact that this whole thing, you cannot do it like the Jews. You cannot be an individual person and succeed in the plan of God. You cannot be an unknown person and succeed in the plan of God. You cannot be an Igbo man and succeed in the plan of God. You can succeed in the craft of an, of an Igbo man. You can succeed in the craft of a Yoruba man. You can succeed in the craft of an Ibibio man, of an Anang man, or a man, of a, an English man, an, an African. That's about if it has to do with the kingdom because we are gathered here not on account of Ibo Kweno. It is not a man, not, an anna, not think of that. It is Jesus is Lord. And we are talking about salvation. When you mention the name Jesus, is a prophecy God will save. And that's not an Anang agenda. It's not an African agenda. The name Jesus is a promise God will save. It means when you say Jesus, it's a responsibility. I am in the kingdom and the kingdom setting. It's about God saving. It's not me. I'm or Ibibioin or Iboin. So for the first time, they laid aside their tradition and their culture. Say, women, you guys can stay here. Just stay. Just stay. We cannot be holier than Jesus. We used to have Jesus. We used to have women attend to him. And Let's stay here. What are we staying here? What are we doing together? Let's pray. For the first time, there is no this. There is no segregation between the twelve the apostles. We are apostolos. We are the ones that have been sent. You people don't belong. This time around, the same upper room. Everyone is upper. 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 They are like higher than their arrogance and their pride and their stupidity and foolishness. We are now in upper room. A level higher than yesterday. A level higher than what our fathers gave to us. What our culture and tradition Give to us. Now this is upper room. Tell me upper room. Say upper room. When will you get upper? When will you get upper? This whole thing is about getting ready. Reach the point that they have to go to upper room and do something meaningful. And in collegiality, in, 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 in collectivity, in, 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 in community, communality, everyone see, everyone just together. With the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, so there is no issue. Like Mary, I am the mother of this one, so I'm supposed to be some stay there and pray. And with his brothers, brothers, so there is no issue of the flesh and blood and spirit here. Yeah. No distinction. This is the church. This is when things break out. If you if you take this arrangement into the family, that's how God can visit the family with his own kingdom plan and a lifting and a blessing that will raise people. So many families with all the qualification and the human preparedness, but God is not willing to pour out because they are not ready. Because children and in the left, the man on the right and the woman in the, in the center, no connection, no commonality. And they, 
there, there is this there's competition there is, there is an there's some kind of rivalry even between the husband and the wife and there is a, a, it is me 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 kind of thing and all of that the arrogant apart from that the issue is that this next thing that God wants to do we will show everybody we are not at their level that you have not even started, then you are starting wrong. You have, God has not even sent it. God is saying, when it comes, I will show everybody. By the way, I, I just let me let me even keep quiet. That, that your sister that used to live, well, let me just keep quiet. Let God just do what He says He will do. He will not do it. <laughs> as long as it's to make a point and prove something to one sister or one brother. Or the other person and the other person this whole thing whatever god wants to do is about the kingdom and that kingdom is about everybody hello oh this doesn't look like pentacles right to so come and talk about fire 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 as if, as if you know what is fire you read it by fire fire is power power has financial dimension power has academic dimension power has professional dimension, political dimension. So fire is a symbolism. It's a symbol. It's a symbolism and it's a symbol of power. And when God wants to lift people, this power manifests in different sectors. You must be ready. Be ready to be used by God. This all continued with one accord. Just one point. Just one more point. While they prayed, another thing clicked again. Something else clicked. You want to know what clicked again? They took responsibility in organizing. They took responsibility in organizing. Setting things in order. God I should tell you when you are ready, he's ready. That's what I've been telling people in Grace Family. Seven years ago, this movement was one man squad. At this moment, it's no longer one man squad. It's a squad of the people. That means wherever God has planted you, you must connect the vision and make honest, sincere kingdom contribution. Because the visitation is for all. Seven years ago, from seven, from that time till now, many families have been changed, hundreds into thousands. People have been made wealthy. Healing, deliverance, marriage is restored. Things are broken out in proportions not expected. I didn't expect what I am seeing. By the grace of God, I didn't know what to expect. What God is doing in people's eyes. So for God to do the next one, has to be order. Setting things right. Not those who used to be in winners, bringing winners here. Winners is a vision. We are no longer there. Not those who used to be in redeem, bringing redeem here. Redeem is a vision. A vision given to by God to somebody. And this is not redeem. So it's about paying attention to what God is doing here. Because the next thing he wants to do here has to be carried by hands that are joined together. By people. That the, the differences between this and that class and class, that they don't matter. That is about what God wants to do. This is not just about the church, but it's the same paradigm in every area. In an organization, in a business, that you expect God's next move. Take responsibility in setting things in order. In your business, in your family, in your marriage. In every area of life, ask God, get me ready. Get me ready. See, see what they did in getting ready. They took responsibility in organizing while still waiting. While waiting, they, are, they were praying. While waiting, they were organizing. Acts chapter 1 verse 21 to 26. Acts 1, 21 to 26. Therefore, of these men, and God is telling me, somebody sitting here that you need to go reconcile with your family. Go and reconcile with your wife. Go and reconcile with your husband. The next thing you, the next time, God says I should tell somebody here, the next time you fast, don't fast for that thing you have been asking God for. There is a lifting. There is, there is something you are expecting, a thing. You have been fasting. God says you should now fast for 
your spouse to align with it, for your family to align with it. That's what I hear in my spirit that interrupted me. So stop asking God to give you that thing. That's not a problem. Problem is that you are not ready. Your home is not in order. You are alone. But you are not expected alone where God is taking you to. So God is sending me you back. He will take apology. Go and apologize. He will take humility. Go and be humble. Somebody here, I'm, and I'm talking to you. The only space I should, I should tell you this straight. So you stop fasting. Stop going to places where you, they, have, they see visions for you. Nothing will change. Those people who see vision, they don't see that you are not doing what you should do at all. They see vision for you, but they don't see that you are unjust and unfair and wicked to the person of your life and the people of your life. Also, I should tell you, set it right. Set it right. Ask. I hope by this time I will be allowed to resume this scripture. Acts chapter 1. Rise to your feet. Lift up your two hands. Come on. When I say rise to your feet, we have a short time. Don't take five years to rise up. I'm sorry. Sorry. I will be nice after now. Getting people ready. Getting people ready. Crooked hearts and crooked minds. Isaiah chapter 40. You set straight a highway, make a highway for the Lord. Make crooked roads straight. Fill valleys. Bring down hills. Make smooth rough edges. And then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall, shall see together lift up your two hands Lord say Lord say it from within you and with a passion say Lord please get me ready whatever it takes lift up your two hands just speak personally for 30 seconds whatever it takes Whatever needs to be broken in my life for me to be ready, break it. Whatever needs to leave my life for me to be ready, take it. Whoever needs to leave my life, whoever needs to come into my life for me to be ready, please do it. Whatever needs to change in my life, please go ahead. No, pray like you are giving God permission. Pray like you have, you have hands You've taken your, your hands off the steering. Like God, take over. Like God, take over. Pray like God, take over. Pray like God, take over. Get me ready. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We see that just a few minutes. Just a few minutes. Acts 1, 21 to 26. Therefore, of these men who have accompanied us, this is part of the speech. Peter stood up and spoke in those days. As they prayed, he spoke. Wisdom came, counsel came. And part of the speech. Therefore, of these men who have accompanied us all the time, what was the point here? That they were supposed to be 12, but they were 11. How will God pour out what was meant for 12 upon 11? Maybe we are the reason this thing has not yet worked. We, were not, we are not yet ready. We are supposed to be 12. One of us, a criminal, not our fault. We couldn't do anything about it. But should we now stay here forever? We don't know for how long we have been praying, how long we will still pray. The Lord said something will come from above. Why has this thing not come from above? Sir, let's do something about it. Count now. We apostles are supposed to be 12. But we are now 11. So let's do something about it. Now, this is not Jesus speaking. There are things that Jesus will not say, you will say. There are things Jesus will not do, you will do it. 
Say, Lord, you do all things. He does all things except the things you must be the one to do. So all things refer to all things he must do that only he can do. Some of the things that are to be done, they are on your table. See, these guys, they prayed. They waited. Nothing happened. The visitor from heaven had not come. When will he come? For until he comes, he said, we should not leave Jerusalem. Now, nah, is this how we are going to perish here? Let's do something. Oh yeah, let's do something. Therefore, of these men, who have accompanied us, all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to that, to that day when he was taken off from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. If this is what this whole thing is about, let us do it now. Verse 23. And they proposed to Joseph called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justus and Matthias. And they prayed. They prayed and said, You, O Lord, who, who know the hearts of all, show which of these two you have chosen to take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they cast their lots, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. See what has happened, what has changed. You notice what has changed? It's no longer competition now. They are now asking God for direction. It's no longer issue of James and John saying, well, we have a brother. We have a dead brother you didn't know. There is a dead party amongst us. We are the majority in this thing. So, it's not Andrew and his brother. And, uh, saying, no, this time around, let's turn to the Lord. That is when people are ready. When your heart is now God, what? When your mind is now God word, God compliant, that in insignificant things you seek God's direction. In insignificant things you seek God's direction. God feels comfortable that when He lifts you, you will seek His direction. God is comfortable to know that when it matters, you turn to Him. And when it doesn't matter, it is to Him you turn. He knows. That when the big things of life come, you will still turn to him. Even when you have not yet known anything, you don't have the grace to turn to the Lord. Turning to the Lord is punishment. Turning to the Lord is waste of time. Turning to the Lord is inconvenience. Turning to the Lord and creating time to seek the Lord is waste of time. And you say, Lord, I am, help me, help me. The next help you need is the grace, the ability, the readiness to turn to the Lord for direction. I'm just trying to tell you when you are ready. Now, do you understand it now? At this point, these men were ready. They were ready. They now know God now, there is a conviction. They have gotten it. They know it now. That this whole thing is not by power. This whole thing is not political. This thing is not fast runs. This thing is not scheming. It's not human wisdom. This thing that it is God's thing and it's about God. That before I start a new business project, it is not when he fails that I need a man of God. A lot of people, the, the only time they know they have a man of God, the only time they know they have a pastor is that things have gone wrong. At the beginning, I want to start something. There is nothing. Oh, God has laid this in my heart. I'm asking this. I, I, just, I just wanted to let you know this and ask for your blessing. I came with this gift in my hand. That one is, is, is nonsense. It doesn't make sense. But when you hit the rock, and people, not you, maybe some people you know, they hit the rock and break their head. That is when they say, Pastor, I've been waiting for you for five days now. I have booked your people. have not allowed me to see you. You begin to accuse people. Accuse people that you want to seek help. From the beginning, direction. Not when it crashes. Somebody will now come to help you gather the pieces. At this point, you think you know everything. You have everything. So you want to start a new project. No covenanting work with God. No counsel. No direction. The person you call your pastor has no plan. Has no stake. The only stake of a pastor is that things have gone wrong. 
That is the only stake of a pastor. A pastor is things have gone wrong person in your life. You don't need him at the beginning. And when things are going right, you don't come to say, oh, bless God, God, the prayers, uh, the prayers, uh, the, the blessing of God. Uh, I acknowledge I have been helped. I just came to bless God through you with this. I hope it refreshes you. Sir, it is a rare thing. Only time you see people put, laying siege around you that trouble everywhere. The husband, this, the father of this person has disappeared. I want to change the name of the person to your name. Please, which one do we use? Edith or Henry? I don't want to talk about other ones. Let's leave that one. Praise God. At this point, we are now ready to go to the Father's response because they are ready. They have gotten it. That God is the beginning and the end. The Alpha and the Omega. And at every point in between the Alpha and the Omega, that He is the first and the last. is the author and the finisher. Is the lifter and the keeper. Is the director and the save. Oh, Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 to 4. And what a blessing when people are ready. What a day. When the scripture says, the day of Pentecost had fully come. Pentecost, that was not the first Pentecost. Pentecost had always been there. It's just that they were ready for this particular Pentecost. Every day has a name. If you are ready today, it will come today. God is not the God of Monday or Tuesday alone. That, oh, sorry, God is not on duty until Monday. God is the God of any moment you are ready. God is the God of any moment you are ready. God doesn't have office day on Tuesday or on Wednesday. God doesn't have call time at midnight or at 3 a.m. When you are ready, God is ready. Acts of Apostles chapter 2 verse 1, I'm, I feel blessed in my spirit. When the day of Pentecost had fully come. In other words, the day of appointment had fully come because they were ready. If they were not ready, the day of Pentecost would still be fully there. But you will meet them still waiting, not ready. I pray today that today will meet you ready. And today will come to get you to get ready. They were all with one accord in one place. This scripture is loaded. One accord, unity has been achieved. One place, everyone is in one place. Everyone is in one heart. Everyone is in one spirit. One accord, agreement, settlement. They were ready to move with God because two can only go together if they are in agreement. So the day of Pentecost, the, the scripture did not say the Holy Spirit was sent on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit first said when the day of Pentecost came, they were all in what? They were all with what? One accord. That is what God wanted to achieve. Jesus called them individually. But at this point, you are no longer individuals. When he called Peter, James and uh, this and Matthew, uh, Levi and all of these other guys, they were not there. But now, in one place, some were called from the, the shore, the seashore. Some were called from the tax collector's booth. Some were called from some places. But now, one place, one accord, one place, one accord, one place, readiness. So this is how to be ready. One accord. One place. One accord with God. One place with God. One accord with his vision. One place with his vision. One accord with his plan. One place with his plan. One accord. One accord. One accord. One accord. When one accord. And suddenly. Because they are ready. Now there is no time to wait. Suddenly. So when it comes to God responding. It is called suddenly. And suddenly. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. 
they filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled. See what has happened. There appeared to them divided tongues. A huge tongue came, but divided. As of fire, it came as one, now divided. So they are drinking from one cup now. One fire distributed. No superiority. No difference. One fire divided tongues. One fire divided tongues as of fire. And one sat upon each of them. Not two on one. Just one on one. And they were all filled. One was enough for each to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And each began to speak with other tongues because the Spirit gave them utterances. Rise to your feet. Just lift up your two hands. Just ask God in your spirit, Lord, please visit me again. Visit me. On this day, can you just raise your hand like, so that you feel that you are raising your hand? Maybe it will cost you some effort to even raise your hand. Will you just raise your hand? Just say, Lord, please, Visit me. Visit me. Visit me. Visit me. Just visit me. I don't even know what to ask, but just visit me. In every area that I'm not ready, Lord, visit me and make me ready. Make me ready. Make me ready. Mm. I surrender. All to all to ah, I surrender. You don't sing it, just ask God, make me ready. Please visit me. Visit my marriage. As you visit me, visit my husband. As you visit me, visit my wife. As you visit me, visit my wife to be. As you visit me, visit the man who will marry me. As a single, on a day like this, don't just ask God for you. Visit that person. Who is the man who is delaying me? Who is the woman who is delaying me? Visit that person. Who is delaying me, Lord? Who am I delaying? Who am I supposed to bless, Lord? And I'm not blessing because I'm not yet ready. Whose life am I supposed to change? And I'm not changing because I'm not ready. Please, just talk. Do what the apostles did. Do what they, about, is it 120 of them or so did? They prayed, set my life on order. Oh Lord, set my heart on fire for you. For you. Alabosheta. Kalamasika. Let, let it not be emotional. Let it be intentional. Who am I delaying? Whose life am I supposed to change? But I'm not yet ready. Who am I supposed to be used? To honor, to live, to heal, to bless. To raise. Lord, visit me. Visit me. Set my heart in order for you. For you, please open your mouth and speak. Let it not be emotional, let it be intentional, deeply spiritual. Oh Lord, set my heart on fire for you. Alabash it for you. Alabash it. Oh Lord, Alabash it. Please set my life in order for you. I want to burn 
for you. Salabote prekata. Mande prokatola. Manda labo si anda tole nele ya. Ria mando ri anda si anda pok. Randa katole ya manda. I don't know whether you have ever spoken to God. Whether you are young. I just want to let you know there is a plan of God. That God is ready to bring forth in, his la- in your life. But are you ready? Say, Lord, don't let me be too old for your plan. Get me ready now. Don't let me be too old for your plan. Get me ready now. Don't let your plan wait for too long. Lord, get me ready. Get me ready, Lord. Oh, Lord. Set my heart on fire for you. Yeah, for you. Oh, Lord. Please set my life in order for you. I want to burn 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 for you. Raise those hands and speak in words. I want to burn for you. 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 Alabo Shatter. Oh, Lord. Spare my life on fire for you. Set my spirit on fire for you. Halabori and Ade. Malala Lalo, Nimaratea. Eliana Talabosia. Liana Tolo. Malala Radado. Dadada Mi va so fami Mi mi fa la fa so mi prego Kala to preke Re 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 kala katata Eh mi katata ta Da ti la 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 da Ti Do re mi mi Arredo mi va so fa mi mi va la fa so mi re e gi di e bo be i bo wa fa ando me ga mo o yen do You're going to speak in the Holy Ghost if you can. Can those ministers come here? Let me just come up here for Your mouth must talk. Your mouth must say something. Say, I need you. I can no longer stay here. I can no longer hold it. I can no longer hold it. You cannot speak in the Holy Ghost. You cannot speak in the Holy Ghost. Say, I can no longer keep silence. I can no longer keep silence. I can no longer keep silence. I am tired of waiting. Get me ready. Get me ready. Get me ready. Malabosha, talamani lebro. Malabrasi, bola katea, bola da. Lande te pelea, dosi peleata. I'm desperate for you. Speaking the Holy Ghost. Mandele Broly and Nasu Mandele Yarote. 
and the problem was and Spread for you, Alaboshi and Nelly and Lotsi and Rofreka, Alaboshi and I am lost without speaking the Holy Ghost, Mandy and Nelly, Mandy Broly and and I'm hopeless without you. I am tired without you. I am dead without you. Without your fire, I am dead. Malaboshi, Mandele, Brala, Rade. Mandele, Brala, Rade. Mandele, Brala, Rade. And I. Where is your fire? Where is your might? Where is your power? Alabosia, I'm in lost it up. You are the king of all hearts. Take over every heart here. Can you just offer your heart to Jesus? That's where you start getting ready. As a child of God, can you rededicate your heart? Do you have the boldness to reconsecrate yourself? Do you have the boldness to ask God, separate me from sin? That's the beginning of the readiness. When David and his men met the priest 
in their wandering and they were hungry and they asked the priest is there any bread we can eat here he said there is no bread except the bread of the present ah the bread of the present so how are we going to do he said well you can still eat the only condition is at least that the men will have stayed away from women in other words impurity immorality you see that's the beginning everyone in this house can you close your eyes ministers while you pray can you just watch and can you just lift up your two hands like you are receiving something say God take away impurity I give impurity from my heart impure relationship impure mind impure heart for if the young men have stayed away from defilement they can eat the bread of the presence you see there is a bread that is ready for you in the presence of God the first condition is purity, cleanness. The fire comes to purify. Can you tell the Holy Spirit, please take impurity from me. This heart is for Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, take this heart. Cleanse this heart. Purify. Set this heart on fire. Take lust away from this heart. Take defilement. Take immorality. Take adultery. Take fornication. Take lesbian thing, homosexual thing, pornographic thing. Take masturbation thing. Take envy thing, jealous thing, or jealousy thing. Bitterness thing, hate thing. Just take from this heart. Just speak. Just speak. Just speak. Say, Holy Ghost, the fire of God take over this heart. Arrest my heart. Holy Spirit, I'm just asking you. You know, I can do nothing other than just showing up and trusting that you will come through. I have shown up today. Please. And the only sufficiency I have is Jesus. The only office, the only title, the only, the only rank, the only righteousness and qualification in holiness is Jesus. For the sake of Jesus, take over this heart. Take over this heart. And you begin to wave those hands like that heart is being taken over. Take over this heart. Can you begin to speak personally, individually, intentionally? Take over. Take over take over mention what he takes over take over take over lord take over this house lord take over this house take over the ministries of this house take over the protocol ushering take over the security lord take over the set house the worship ministry lord take over the ministry for children the ministers for children lord take over the media Lord, take over the sanctuary ministers. Take over our personnel and ministers at the front desk. Hospitality. Those who welcome. Take over those who minister to first timers. Take over every department. Lord, take over the prevailing men, the mighty men. The prevailing women and the mighty men and the heirs of Christ. Lord, just take over. Mm, broken praise be yours Lord, forever and all my praise be yours God forever mm. Lord take this heart let it become your throne on bro Everyone sing it. Unbroken breath. Be God, God forever. All my praise be Oh, 
from these lives take praise from this house let the praise in this house honor you let the praise from these marriages honor you let the praise from these singles honor you let the praise from these children honor you Lord let the praise from these businesses honor you let the praise from these children of yours let the praise from them honor you in the name of Jesus can you just clap those hands and say thank you as you clap, say thank you. 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 Thank you, Lord, forever. As you clap, say Visit their family. 